because they don't they're not gonna yeah all right well let's begin i believe darnell put us on internet if not he's about to all right he's okay he's getting us on there let's sing a 524 and with our subject tonight is a very deep one so we're going to need a lot of interaction tonight ask your question circle the verse that you have a question on and we'll see if we could find it together amen uh, 524, let's sing. We can stand up and sing this one. This will be our uh, opening song as well. First and last stanzas. Then we'll bring on Elder Carlton. All right, Sister Tress, we're doing the first and last stanza, so you can lead us on now here. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. First and last. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Tis so sweet. How does it go? Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Oh. Just him and his word. Just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus. How I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Fourth stanza? How does it go? I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Hey, Amen. I'm going to get y'all the mic next time. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord. Y'all sounding happy and cheerful and fired up and ready to go? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let us just have a little opening prayer. Father, we thank you so much for this time to come together and to just be blessed by your word and the fellowship one with the other, oh God. So now we just thank you for your presence here, and we ask, oh Lord, that you just show up and show out, because it's your time, and we are willing to just listen, but not only listen, to learn. Bless our pastor as he brings that word, oh God. We thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. You may, Amen. may be seated. All right. I know that there's somebody raring to tell me about the goodness of God tonight. So just don't all you jump up at the same time. Okay. All right. Okay. You, you. Everybody knows. I think most of you know that I went to the prayer summit this weekend. I had a wonderful time. Did yeah. we dress? Yeah. Did we have a good time? Yeah. We had a wonderful time. Yeah. We learned about yeah. prayer and. And, and how we are praying. One thing I want, I wanted to just tell the church to let them know that a lot of us, we're, we're kind of praying for the wrong things. We're, we're trying to go to God about self, our needs, what we want, what we would like to see happen. But we are needing to seek God's first face first so that he, his will, will come out of our wants and our needs. So having a relationship, I just learned so many things. It, I could never tell all the things that I learned in this session, but that's just one of them. It just shows us how much prayer was 
was so important. Mm -hmm. So I just appreciate just being there. And I'll tell it each I'll tell the church a little bit more about it each time as we go along. Amen. It was just so much stuff. Amen. Anybody else? Well, I, I have something to just thank God for. Um, I don't know if everyone knows what type of business I'm in, but I'm in the uh, building products, where the, you know the housing market all right. and all that. And, and our business had fell off some, mm -hmm. but we got news this week that the company that I work for, which is Blue Links, bought out one of our competitors right. this week. Cedar Creek. Actually, Cedar Creek have a warehouse in Smyrna, and my warehouse is in Madison. So we bought them out for $412 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then that just go to so you know, um, I said, I, I think I can work there now until I retire. <laughs> you, you know, so we just got, we just inquired one of our competition. And the other thing is we just bought in the um, cabinet. File cabinet, fireproof file cabinet, is 600 pounds. So the wife asked me, so how are you going to get that thing in the church off your trailer? I said, well, I don't know, but God has sent somebody. And as soon as I pulled up, Donnell <laughs> walked in the building at the same time. I mean, and he just, he just sent us all the help we need when we need it. You're right, girl. I just need to learn how to say it right. But at any rate, <laughs> I'd like for everyone to know I've been going, I've been walking on a little dark path, you know, since my son passed away. But something's changed inside of me. It broke right open and all spilled out. Till I had no doubt that healing had come Amen. to me. And it's, it is coming to me. And I thank everyone here for being patient with me and showing me kindness and love through my rough, rough time and, and giving me space to be who I am because I am going to be who I am and I don't have to fake. I th I'm done with that. I'm done with it. Okay. <laughs> so I want you all to know that I, I, I just praise God to be in prayer. I mean, since a long time. I just praise God to be here. Amen. I got testimony. <laughs> okay. Um, I just like Sister Carolyn was saying, we had a really good time at the the prayer church, summit church. this weekend, and my testimony is that we made it to the prayer summit because for the for the last few months I've been having some pro um, problems with my tires on my car. I have uh, somebody hit my car around the time I first bought it, and it needed an alignment. And then when I went to get it, um, so what the alignment was doing on the back was eating away at the inside of my tires and so my back tires kept going out and so um I got the alignment but they weren't able to like fully get it aligned properly and they said it was gonna it was like body damage and it was gonna cost a couple hundred dollars and I was like eh, I'm not gonna do that and so and I can afford it and so I um I went to I just kept driving I, I asked the man like can I still drive and this was a couple months ago can I still drive back and forth to work because I commute to Shelbyville to work every day. He said, yeah, it's fine right now. It is eating away at it, but right now they're okay. So I've just been driving, 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 and I've been trying to find time to go back to the tire place who replaced the tires, the two of the tires the first time, because they told me to come back after I got the alignment. When I went and got the alignment, I never went back. And I haven't been finding time to go back. So next thing you know, the prayer summit just sneaks up, you know? <laughs> and I'm just like, well, I got to get on the road and go. So I prayed that, you know, we would be able to make it there and make it back. And we did. And now my tires were, like, shaking. You know, when they're about to go out, they, your car vibrates. And so it was. It vibrated the whole way there. It vibrated the whole way back. But I made it. And then Monday, 
went, before I went to work at work, I made it out to Shelbyville and then went back to the tire place again and got the replacement. I was like, I'm just going to get it with the alignment still the way that it is. And so God made it happen. So I was like really grateful for that. And I was, I'm trying to work on like praying without worrying, you know, mm -hmm. like, you know, a lot of us pray and then we still think about like how God going to do it, you know, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> so. So that was my thing, like, okay, I've prayed about it, so let me stop thinking about it. Like, God is going to make it. Because I, I get, like, really bad anxiety sometimes. And so I was like, okay, I'm not going to, like, think. I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to let God do it. And so he did it. I made it. Amen. And I'm here. Amen. And so <laughs> Mona Lisa, name of they rode with me. You know, I'm always more worried about when I have other people riding with me when I'm riding by myself. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, let us all make it because I would hate their parents would be real mad at me if something happens. So I'm just really grateful that God blessed us with traveling mercies. And we met so many people while we were there, so many young adults while we were there. It was like double the, the young adults that were there this year than it was last year. And they were like on fire, ready to go, committed young adults. And so we had a young adult forum. It was awesome. Like I can't wait to like just share with the whole church about like all the stuff that we learned there because it was amazing. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. I have a problem, y'all, yeah? but it's a good problem. My clothes are falling off me, man. <laughs> <laughs> my, I keep having to pull my skirt up. <laughs> it's an awesome feeling. I've been trying to lose weight for about three years. I ain't lost nothing. <laughs> but now the Lord has just given me that truth, and it has just come on like a light bulb in my head. And I go to that. I went to that treadmill today, and I was walking up a storm and feeling good about it. Yeah, I had purpose, and I had some energy, too. So I'm thanking the Lord for what he is doing in our lives and how he's just making his word come alive, you know? He says the truth will make you free, right? When you learn the truth about what God says you should eat, it starts freeing you from all of those pounds, you know? I won't need fat girl clothes after a while. But right... <laughs> So I'm thanking God for that. Uh, anybody else? Before we go into our, our prayer session? Okay. Prayer requests then. Yes. Okay. Uh, if you didn't hear, uh, those of you who are late coming in, Pastor Harden is in surgery now, uh, according to Pastor Owens, and uh, we need to pray for him. said something about uh, a hernia ruptured. Wow, okay, so, and then uh, Sister Ramsey, she's back in uh, <coughs> ICU. So, you know, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So when we go into prayer about us and whatever our situations and these people, believe what God can do. Amen. Believe in that prayer. Amen. Don't just be praying and doubting. Believe. Amen. Okay. Sister Smith, I saw your hand. I, um, my prayer request is for my friend, uh, Janice Church, Terrell, her brother is Dr. George Smith. Okay. And he is in hospice now. Okay. He's in Dr. Hospice. George Smith is yes. in? Yes. Oh, goodness. Yes. Okay. They couldn't do anything else. Uh, when he, they moved him there a, a day ago. Dr. So Smith, that's here George in Murphy's? Uh, yes. The doctor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's Catherine's neighbor, too. I didn't know that. I want us to come together. We too scattered. As a matter of fact, I want us to come together and pray. Okay? Please. I wanted us to pray uh, for King. He wants to be a part of our prayer ministry. Amen. He is. I'm him up, and, you know, he's been coming to prayer meeting, and I want us to just keep him in prayer, everybody. Just Amen. Because All right. This is this is a really important job, and well, it's not a job, but I just want us to lift it. Yes. Come on. Lift him up. Come on up. Now I'm going to ask for two prayers, and uh, we don't want closet prayers, but we want effective prayers. Okay. And I'm going to start with the prayer leader. 
Okay, you've heard the request thus far. Any more before we begin this journey? I'd like to pray <coughs> Cheryl Black. Uh, her family uh, during the time of uh, uh, death, uh, you, they're, they're bereaving their uh, mother's loss. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask Linda to pray. And uh, okay, Carolyn, couldn't think of your name. And Elder Jeff, just, just give us a, a, a good ending, okay? Amen. All right. All right. You can start. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. I want to lift up, the, first I want to lift up everyone in this circle, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, the Lady Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Black, you said? Mm -hmm. Cheryl Black. Um, I want to also pray for uh, Ella Bonita uh, Ramsey, mm -hmm. who has went back into I see you, dear Heavenly Father. I want to lift up all those prayers that were that came from us today, dear Heavenly Father. I ask that you touch and anoint each one that is in this circle. Lord, cover this church. Cover all of our members, mm -hmm. the members who represent this family. Lord, I ask that our prayers be heard for you, by you. I heard. I, I pray that we are. Uh, together and on one accord that the love that you have shown us is shown in this house tonight, dear Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Just be a blessing to us. Mm -hmm. I ask that you lead and guide our service this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Be with our pastor, dear Heavenly Father. Touch his lips. Mm -hmm. Lord, just cover us. I ask these and all things in your name. Amen. 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 Is there no bomb in Gilead? <laughs> is there no physician there? then why my people are not healed? Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, not because we're good or worthy or that we have merited any favor. We come to you because Jesus told us if we come to you, you will in no wise cast us out. He said that if earthly parents know how to give their children good gifts, how much more will you give us the Holy Ghost? So, Father, I come boldly before the throne lifting up Sister Ella. The devil is attacking her head. He's attacking her respiratory system. And without air, we cannot live. It's not consistent with life. So in the name of Jesus, anoint every nurse. Anoint every doctor. Anoint the cleaning people. Anoint the CNAs. Anoint the lab people. Anoint Anyone who comes in her room, let them know in the name of Jesus that this is a child. She is a princess. That is God's daughter. And let them see her and treat her as such. I lift up Pastor Owen's mother in the name of Jesus. The angels have stopped writing on her because she cannot think for herself anymore. But he has not stopped writing on her caregivers. So, Lord, if she's still in the hospital in the name of Jesus. You anoint everyone who will lay their hands on her. Bless her daughter. Give her daughter the love and patience that she needs. Now, Lord, the patience she may need for her little child or her brother, she don't need that patience. She needs the patience she needs for her mother. And to remember, if one woman can take care of five children, surely five children can take care of one woman. So, Father, I thank you for doing it. We thank you for doing it. We will not worry because you said, I'll be a husband to you. You said, oh, you want some bread? Here it is. You want some water? I will be your water. That's what you told us, Lord. You are, and I believe you. I believe you. You are my husband right now. And you will supply every need that we have. And like I prayed earlier, when you ordained Adam to name the animals, when he named each animal, it is the exact name that you would have chosen because you, your mind and Adam's mind was so linked. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Ghost, link Pastor Owen's mind with yours. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I claim it, that he will be linked with you and that as he teach us, it will be what you will teach us. Not because we're good or worthy, but because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you. Father, I know you have heard these prayers. You have heard these requests. Father, right now, I ask you to go by the hospital room, Father, and I want you to touch those that are laying on the bed of affliction. And Father, don't forget our youth. Father, we have one brother here, King. Father, look, Father, he wants to be a part of your discipleship. 
And Father, I know you have the young because they're strong and the old because we know the way. So Father, I ask you to touch each and every individual in this room right now, Father. And if there's anything in here that's not of you, Father, I ask you to remove it right now. Father, I ask you to go by Pastor Harding's bedside. Father, right now, Father, I ask you to take that hernia, Father, and just get rid of it. Not only him, Father, but Sister Ramsey. Mm -hmm. Father, and Father, there's many more, Father, that I dare not call their name because you know every hair on their head. Father, you know every ill on their body. Father, I ask you to touch them right now and heal them. Give them love. Give them peace. Give them understanding, Father, because you sit on the throne alone. Mm-hmm. And Father, right now, Father, we go into your word with the pastor. Father, I ask you to give him a mighty blessing. Father, I ask you to open our hearts and our minds, Father, that we will have your understanding and not ours. Mm-hmm. In your son's name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And Father, Amen. be with Dr. Smith in Jesus' name. All right, Pastor, we fired up. Amen. We all going to come with it. <laughs> So get those mics ready. Get those mics ready. And we're going to, uh, and uh, Brother Darnell, if we could turn on this screen right here. It went off, I believe. This screen against the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that camera. All right. All right. That doesn't seem to be coming on, but this comes. Okay, it's loading. Okay, good, good. All right, man, I appreciate that prayer. Amen. Appreciate the prayers of the saints. And uh, just to give you an update on my mom. She is out of the hospital. She's with my, yeah, she's with my younger brother for a little while. And then with my sister, uh, she did, she, she broke her toe when she fell. So, but thank God it could have been worse. Amen. Could have been worse. So we praise God for that. Uh, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. This is very deep. Now, I understand why uh, Peter said certain things Paul said are uh, hard to be understood. And those who don't have an open mind and a willingness to really put in the pain to study, they'll rest the scriptures to their own destruction. And so as you read Paul's writings, if you read on the surface, now, realizing that Paul was highly educated, highly spiritual, uh, then you might miss the point. Because when you combine highly spiritual with the highly educated, you cannot be surface. He always has something going on underlining what he's trying to say. So this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. Because spiritual things are what? Spiritually discerned. So uh, let's pray for spiritual discernment tonight. Let's pray. Dear Lord, bless your word tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Galatians, the third chapter. and We're going to do part two, which we begin at verse 12. We begin at verse 12. Galatians 3, verse 12. Paul says something here that catches our attention. It says, and the law is what? But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Is Paul talking sarcastically here? Uh, What is he dealing with here? Remember, you can't read on the surface with Paul. He says, and the law is not of faith. What does that mean? The law is not of faith. Anybody have any thoughts? The law is not of faith. Well, the commentary lets us know that it, it means it does not operate on the basis of faith. It does not require faith on the part of those who practice it. Remember, Paul is talking to the Jews here and uh, to the Gentiles as well. But the Jews uh, felt that they kept God's law and they felt that they were doing it without faith in Jesus. But they really weren't doing it like they think. So Paul's getting into the grid. He says the law is not of faith. Now, let me ask you a question. What can't the law do? All right. Law can't save you. What else can't the law do? It can't justify you. What else can't the law do? All right. We have the mic going around. She said, 
Linda said it can't <laughs> sanctify you either. Oh, it can't <laughs> sanctify you. There is a purpose of the law because when folks read this on the surface, they think that Paul is just doing away with the law altogether. That's why you got to read it uh, deeper than that. Now, notice Paul said in verse 12, live in them. He didn't say live by them. He said live in them. The, the Jews and so forth, uh, they were living in them instead of living in Christ. And when you live in them instead of living in Christ, who brings them along, then you're in trouble. Christ must be the center. He must be the focal point. The law doesn't bring Christ along. Christ brings the law along. You see, so you can't live in them. Paul said, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. So Paul here is almost been a little sarcastic. He said, if you want to live in them, if you want to do that, how is that working for you? <laughs> You're being legalistic. All right. And if you, if you notice, the, those who are trying to become righteous by living in them, they fell short. And as a result, they brought a curse upon them. And that's why the Bible says in verse 13, what does it say? Uh, after Paul talks about living in them in verse 12, he's been a little sarcastic in verse 12. In verse 13, he says, Christ has, hath redeemed us from the what? Curse of the law. Being made a what? Curse for, us. for it was written, curse is everyone that hangeth upon a tree. So, uh, if you want to continue to try to get your own righteousness, you're living a cursed life. Uh, and you're almost uh, reproaching what Christ did on the cross. Christ became a curse for us. Now, not only the good news is uh, that uh, the, the, the curse. Well, let me let me reward reward reword this differently. Uh, the good news is Christ became a curse for us. And the curse is not only death. But what else is the curse? Just implied it to you. What else is the curse? Well, sin brings about death. Ways of sin is death. What else is the curse? The curse of trying to do it on your own. You feel all that work. And, and Christianity becomes more of a burden than a joy. Christ said his yoke is what? Easy and his burden is what? Light. Now, look at Galatians, the fourth chapter and verse four. Galatians, the fourth chapter and verse four. Bible says he was what? Galatians four, verse four. All right. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made what? Under the law. So he was made under the law to redeem folk under the law. Because what does Galatians 4 verse 5 say? Galatians 4 verse 5 say. To redeem them that were what? Under the law. That we might receive what? Alright. So, so Christ was made under the law to redeem folk under the law. Alright. Uh, sons, it actually means children of God, sons and daughters of okay. God, okay. so forth, used in a generic way. Okay. Uh, yes, question. So what you're saying, Brother Pastor, oh, say, brother Pastor and <laughs> my sisters and brothers, is that in order for me to work effectively for women, I need to know some of your blight. Most times we work under what we have experienced and we're extremely effective. So you're saying that Christ became one of us. Yes. To die as one of us. Yes. Okay. And see, and we were living the under the curse, but Christ became a curse to break the curse. All right. And the Great. Understanding of the people. <laughs> the Amen. understanding of the people at that time was that the law saved. If mm -hmm. you didn't keep the law, then you were lost. Wow. Okay? All right. 
then you were lost. Now let's look at Hebrews 9.15 real quick. Keep your finger in Galatians. Hebrews 9.15. And we're going to, um, I'm showing you this because we're going to look at it a little bit in Galatians. All right, what does the Bible say, Hebrews 9.15? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the what? Of the New Testament or the uh, New Covenant. Uh, New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the what? That were under the first testament that which called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now keep this in mind as we go back to Galatians. All right. Now, verse 14 of Galatians 3. Verse 14 of Galatians 3. It talks about. The blessing of Abraham. What's the blessing of Abraham? Anybody tell me. What's the blessing of Abraham? This is Talk to the mic, somebody. What's the blessing of Abraham? That he obeyed. That he obeyed Christ. All right, but I'm looking for something else, though. He obeyed Christ. Okay, that's good. But All right, anybody want to capitalize his, his on seed. that? His seed? His seed came from... Abraham. Blessing of Abraham, the father of nations. Who walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. All right. Walk by faith and not by sight. All right. Blessing of Abraham. Blessing of Sal. The blessing of Abraham, and I see that you're pretty much telling me this. The blessing of Abraham was salvation, the belief of salvation through Jesus Christ. The blessing of Abraham. What did Abraham say to let you know that he indeed was blessed by Christ. John 8 verse 56. John 8 verse 56. What was the blessing of Abraham? We said salvation. He believed in salvation through Christ alone. And when did he come to this revelation? John 8 verse 56. What does it say? Your father Abraham. John 8 56. Somebody read it for me. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. All right. He rejoiced to see my day. What day was that? <laughs> the day that um, the day he was getting ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Yeah, and that was the day that he saw salvation through Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And that not of his works. And he was so glad that it wasn't of his works. Because he certainly did not want to do the work of killing his son. So he was so glad that he was freed from that. Now go to Galatians 3, verse 9. Galatians 3, verse 9. Y'all help me tighten this up. Help me tighten this up. Galatians 3, verse 9. It says, so then they which be of faith are blessed with what? Faithful are believing. Better translation, are believing Abraham. Uh, so if you want to say that Abraham is your father, as the Jews would often say, then you must in all reality, recognize Jesus Christ. Because Abraham saw Jesus' day and he rejoiced. So to truly appreciate the Father is you have to appreciate the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? So, Pastor, what you're saying then that we must have faith. Must have faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. Now, let's look at verse 15. We're going to talk about what we just read about a few minutes ago about the covenants and so forth. Verse 15. I just sowed a little seed in your head when we went over to the other book. Verse 15. Brother and I speak after the what? Manner of man. What does that mean? I speak after the manner of man. This means that he is getting ready to use a human illustration so that he can make a spiritual point. This is what he's telling you he's trying to do. All right, I speak after the manner of man. Let's continue on. Though it be but a, man. but a man's covenant. All right, he's comparing man's covenant. Yet if it be confirmed, no man what? Or added thereto. So Paul is saying, my illustration is, if a man can make a covenant with another man, and you can't break that comfort, covenant except the other party agree, then how much more important is God's covenant with man. Do you think God will be uh, willing to break his covenant 
when and when man is not willing to break their covenant. All right. Now, covenant is an arrangement. Amen. An agreement and an, a, a, a covenant cannot be changed. True or false? Yeah. All right. Unless two parties agree. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, but you still didn't break the covenant because the covenant is still there. You just not obey it. God says <laughs> God is not going to yeah, break yeah. his covenant. So covenant God will not break his covenant. What he right. said, what he promises still stay whether God, you do yes. it or not. God says I will not alter the things that have come out of my lips. That have gone on my lips. God says, I will not alter. He said, I'm the Lord. I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I change not. So uh, Paul is trying to make a point where man, he comes up with their covenant. Man says they don't want to break it. Paul is saying, how much more uh, will God not want to break his covenant? Keep that in mind. Verse 17. Verse 17. Look at it. And I say that the covenant that was what? Before God in Christ, the law, which was, and then we talk about 400 years, 30 years after that cannot be disannulled, that it should make the promise of none effect, so forth and so on. Confirmed means ratified or made binding, and it cannot be changed except by mutual consent. Uh, and that's usually, man is usually one who breaks promises. Verse 16. Hop back up to verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seeds were the what? Promises made. What, what promises did God make to Abraham and his seed? Can you all tell me some of these promises? And did he break them or did he keep them? What was one main promise that God made to Abraham? That he would be father of many nations. <laughs> all right, I'll make you father of many nations. Make you the sand of the sea. I will give you possession of the literal land of Canaan. Did that happen? Uh, I will have a son that will be the heir. You will have a son that will be the heir. Did that come true? Yes. Yeah, it came true. Uh, uh, you will become a great nation, which means you know I'll be insignificant. Folk will know who you are. You turn on the news. Don't you hear about Israel? On the news, you hear about them. They've been... An abused people, but you hear about them. Been around for thousands of years. And they're not the brokest people in the world either, are they? Very well to do. And they gave them they gave the most tithes and offerings and tithes and offerings and offerings on top of offerings and offerings on top of offerings more than any nation in this world. And look how did they get broke? No, they rich. Back to Adam and Eve. That's the only nation that can do that. Wow. Wow. Amen. Now look at verse 19. So God kept every promise. Amen. Any thoughts on that personally? How can we apply this to our personal life right now? And when we read this, we find out that God keeps his promise. What does that mean to you personally? How can you apply this to your personal life? We, we should never doubt. All right. All of that should, our relationships should, we should Strive to uh, strengthen our relationship. Wow. Seeking God's face on a constant basis. Okay. I mean, I mean worry should just be cut out. Worry we cut out? Like, because God promised, then that God promised that I will supply all your needs. But do we believe it like Father Abraham believed it? Do we believe that God will supply all of our needs? No, because we get the present <laughs> and carry on. Uh, one of my favorite scriptures that I hang on to, he says, there's no good thing he'll withhold from them that walk uprightly. Wow. All right. He keeps his end. Now, it's conditional upon me walking upright. God's yeah. not going to change his mind about what he said. Sometimes we don't uh, do what we're supposed to do, and, and sometimes we're satisfied with it. We're a little... Racket going on. This is this one man. A story about this one man. His true story. He was begging for money every every day at this particular corporation, begging for money. And somebody said, "Why don't you 
uh, get a job. And he said, I, I have a job. My job is doing what I'm doing. 5,000 folk come through here every day. And I got $200,000 in the bank. I have a job. Two hundred thousand in the bank from begging. Sounds like he did have a job. <laughs> but see, it still doesn't work when you do it your own way. God says, do it my way. And then you will be looked upon as blessed instead of looked upon as as cursed. Are you with me? Amen. All right. Verse 19. All right. Okay. The things that they, they just said about the blessings of the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With more comes more. All when, right. you, when you get more, you got to give more. And you got to know what comes with more. Yeah. When you get, let's say, you, okay, I got about 500 pairs of shoes. I'm serious. I have nowhere to put them. Wow. You need to give them away. Give them away. I am, I am. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give them away. We got you family and friends. You have to count the cost. And what, you, what, I, I, what we also need to do is understand every blessing. The wheat and the tear grow together with yes. every blessing. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a burden. There's a responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, with every responsibility. blessing. You got that bigger house. <laughs> then you have bigger things. And then, and then, well, let me say this real quick, because what I heard on a video one time, not, not too long ago, when your one rich man said, uh, I believe it's Tony Evans, he's not rich. He said, when you're dead broke, give. He said, because one time he was dead broke, he was down on himself. He gave a young man that he saw was really treating his mother right. And he went to him and he gave him his last 15, 16 dollars. And then he went to the house and said, what did I do? I gave all my money. I'm already dead broke. He said the very next day, a person who owed him at least over a thousand, it came in the mail. He said he was weeping and he was crying. He said, wow, the Lord, I've been shown that when you give it, when you have nothing to give the Lord, he, he, I don't know if he said the Lord, but he said it comes right back to you. So wasn't that amazing? So, so, so it is a principle. So the giving is not just for those who have but the giving is also for those who have not. Amen. See, so the have nots ought not be looking at the haves in church and say, yeah, let them give. Let them pay the bills. Let them uh, do all this. And I'm going to sit back and then uh, uh, continue to be jealous that they have and, and all that kind of stuff. God wants the have nots as well as the haves Amen. to give. All right, Brother Carter. And I read in the word that uh, God says to whom much is given, much, much is, required. is required. Amen. That's good. That's true. Verse 19. Let's go because we're about to get to the nitty gritty right here. Right here is some. All right. Here is a word. 19. This is what I was waiting to get to. This right here. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was what? Added because of transgression. Notice. He said the law was added because of transgression. Does this mean that the law uh, was brand new? No, 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 no. The law was always there. Well, then why do we say it was added? They were not under it. Okay, come on, talk to the mic. Talk to the mic. <laughs> it, it, from what I understand, it does not mean that God said, oh, second thought, they sinned, let's see what we're going to do. Uh -huh. No, they were not under the law before sin because... There was no sin, so there was no law. Everybody it was really in their minds, in their hearts, right? Right. Right. Passed right. on down from generation to generation. Right. But then what happened? Sin. Slavery happened, though, right? Mm -hmm. Sin, slavery, turn of Israel, and slavery for, look, 400-some years. So they forgot a lot of God's principles, a lot, forgot a lot of God's precepts, forgot a lot of God's law. So God had to re-educate them. He had to add the law on two tables of stone to, to reiterate that his principles remain the same. Now, can you all give me some examples? Because a lot of folks don't believe this. They believe the law actually came on Mount Sinai, that it hadn't been around before then. Can you give me some examples that the law uh, came way before Mount Sinai? 
All right. Don't go stealing off my tree. Don't go what stealing off my tree. Uh, what made that against the law? What made that against the law? Because God said don't do it. He just said don't do it. And what does 1 John 3, 4 say? Sin is a what? Transgression of the law. All right. So Adam and Eve could not be guilty of sin. Unless there was a law. That's unless there was a law. Unless there was a law. Am I right? Yeah, there was a law. But see, see. There, there, there was a law, but it, it, it was in their hearts. It was in their minds. God didn't have to just spell it, spell it, spell it out to them. It was in, it was in them. In the law. It, yeah. God never wanted to even give them the impression that I made you. Now, here's a set of rules. God wanted to say, I made you, I want to have a relationship with you, but I'm giving you a part of a part of me. So you're going to keep those things because you have me in you. Well, and let All us, right. Said, Speak to the mic. Sorry, Speak to the mic. I'm sorry. All right. Come on now. We on the Internet now. Keep it rolling. Let us remember that the law is part of God's character is, is, is basically identifies who he is, which is love. And all right. the law existed in heaven. Otherwise, Lucifer couldn't have sinned. All right. Otherwise, Lucifer couldn't have sinned. All right. Now, what does the Bible say in Genesis, in Genesis 26, verse 5, about Abraham? Genesis 26, verse 5. What does it say about Abraham? And we got to, we get, we getting ready to get into some meat right here. All right. He said, Abraham did what? So Abraham kept God's commandments, his statutes, and his laws. He did this, notice, before Mount Sinai. See that? All right. Now, Mount Sinai came in Exodus 20. But in Exodus 16, verse 28, God accused the people of not keeping his laws. When they broke that Sabbath, remember how they went out to get manna? In Exodus 16, 28, and then the Bible says, here it is. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long refuse you to keep my commandments and my laws? And this he said before Mount Sinai. So when the Bible says the law was added, it did not mean it was new. But it meant that they needed to look at that movie one more time. Because have you ever noticed that when you look at the movie the first time, then you look at it the second time, you say, oh, I didn't catch that the first time. You see what I mean? Now, Paul said in Romans 7, verse 7, Romans 7, verse 7, what did Paul say? I had not known what? Except what? First he says, first he said, what should we say then? There's a law of sin. He said, God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the, what's law are you talking about, Paul? Paul says, for I had not known lust, except that I've said, thou shalt not covet. It seems like to me he's talking about the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Right, there. right there. See that? He's quoting, he's quoting, he's quoting. And he said, don't call the law sin. He says, God forbid. That don't act like the law is the curse. Uh, God forbid. But if you act like you're trying to live under the law, then that's when you make the curse the law a curse to you instead of a blessing for you. Okay. I'm, All right. I'm sorry, I'm I'm still in the garden. Come on. Uh, he said, do, he said you can have everything you can eat of every tree in this garden except the tree of good and evil. Okay. Okay, that wasn't the law. So what was that? That was the law. Well. That, that for them to break it would be disobeying. Disobedient. That's where it falls under the law. Uh, they're being disobedient to their parent, God. But also, uh, they broke that commandment, thou shalt not covet. Because Eve coveted that fruit when the devil said you should be as gods. Does that answer or no? Tell me if it don't really answer. Come on, give it a mic because I can tell that by your expression... That there's something behind that expression, and we want to dig it out. We want to address it. 
I'm sorry, but I'm very confused. All right. Because Tell us your confusion. The law. You, you, you keep speaking law. And in the Garden of Eve, Eden, what law? Okay. In the, the, garden, the principle was. Okay. Maybe so. No, the principle was, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 4, that sin is a breaking of the law. So Adam and Eve could not have sinned unless there was a law. Because Paul said where he said where there is no transgression, there is no law. Yeah, there's no law, there's no transgression. So sins are breaking the law. So they had a break in the way the sin is death. There is no speed limit that says how fast I should go. Mm -hmm. So then how can you stop me and say I'm speeding and there is no law that said I'm speeding. So how should I know I'm speeding? So then what's the law? Mm -hmm. Right. So then the See, law had to be there from the beginning yeah. in order for them to sin. And God said he was right his laws in our minds, in our hearts, his laws, his characters. But let's go on because this might open your mind a little bit as we go on. Galatians 3, verse 23. But before what? Faith came. Stop right there. Before faith came. All right? Before faith came. That means before the mystery of how God could save man by faith alone in Christ came. Became a reality when Christ personified the law and righteousness and all that when he came here on earth to be with us. All right? But before faith came, we were kept under the what? Shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Notice it says shut up unto or shut up until the faith which would afterward be revealed. How would it be revealed? When in Jesus Christ, when he would come. Now look at verse 24. This is another good one that you cannot miss. Wherefore... The law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto that we might be justified by faith. So it doesn't say the law justifies. It says our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Because when we look at the law, we realize we can't really keep the law on ourselves, by ourselves. We're helpless. We fall at the foot of the cross to Christ. We say, who can be saved? Because I can't do all this stuff. So we fall at the foot of the cross. Christ cleans us up, picks us up. He writes his law within our hearts. And, and we keep the law through him. All right. So our schoolmaster until Christ should come. When Christ came, the Bible says there's no more need of a schoolmaster. Does that mean we throw out the law? <laughs> All right. Somebody talk to me. All right, how are we going to handle this one? And verse 25, how are you going to handle that, Brother Carlton? It said, but after that faith has come, ha -ha, I got faith. We're no longer under the schoolmaster. Ha, can I get a witness? Yeah. I refer back to, to what Al <laughs> Allen, uh, Elder Allen was saying, that uh, the law is, is simply the character of God. It started in heaven. It started with his character. And, you know, Satan came, he, he disobeyed God. Uh, God's, uh, you know, the character right. that the whole, you know, uh, continued that we, we keep. Okay. And then when Jesus came, he was just an extension of God, or he was God. And we had to, uh, we, we, we associated and we fell back up on the knowing that uh, we'd have to have faith in Jesus uh, so that uh, we could keep the law, so to say, you know, spiritually mm -hmm. and physically. But, uh, the law is, is, is we, we're looking at it like it's, you know, like it is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know, yeah. commandments or ten commandments. All right. But it's actually the character of God. Character you know, with God? Men, when you now, do something wrong, nobody has to tell you you did something wrong. That, that's where God had imputed his spirit in us. So we understand that. that, that he, he, put it, he, he put it, he put it, he put it in you. Now tell me this. When you go to school, and we give it out of the doors, when you go to school, you go from uh, kindergarten to what? To what? Kindergarten to what? 
first grade, and then you're in elementary school, then you go to junior high, then you go to high school, then some of you go to college, and so forth. Now, that was your schoolmaster. So now that you've graduated, you receive your diploma or your degree. Does that mean you forget all that you've been taught? Because if you forget all you've been taught, all right, Elder Doris, I believe you want to talk, right? No? Yeah, I got to recollect here. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot keep the law. You can have a form of godliness, but not All right, yeah, that's the mic is acting up a little bit. All right, touch and touch. Oh, wow. And they were never successful in keeping the law. When All right. Jesus came, then men saw what the law was about, the character of Christ. Love, the first, the first, the first commandment says what? Love. Love, love they God. They didn't understand touch what touch. loving God was, and then the other six was about loving who? Man. Uh-huh. Okay. It All that other time, they were busy doing what they thought was the law. Mercy. All right. They, were, they, 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 they kept to the schoolmaster when the master <laughs> had come. And <laughs> because the whole purpose, the, the law is not the goal of itself. It leads you to Jesus Christ. That's the goal. Uh, and the Jews, they, it was almost following a dead end road. It was like the law, that bit, but God said, I need to go past the law. Law is a schoolmaster. Uh, the Ten Commandments, ceremonial laws, all that was a schoolmaster. Ceremonial laws, how was that a schoolmaster? Sanctuary service, killing the lambs. It was teaching us about Jesus Christ. So when the true master would come, we ought to be able to recognize him. If we've truly been good students in school, killing these lambs and animals and so forth. They were killing millions of lambs and they never changed. That's a shame. Millions and millions and millions of lambs because they started looking at what they were doing instead of the whole point of it. Somebody should have said, what's the point of all of this? And spread it on down to their kids. What's the point of all this killing? The point was to lead folks to Jesus Christ. All right? Uh, verse 25. Verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a school. Matter. Okay, we already read that. Verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Paul is letting the Gentiles know you're just as much as child of God as that Jew, Amen. as that first, second, third generation <laughs> Jew, you're the, just as much of a child of God as that they are. How can we apply that in our, in our Christianity today? Because you often hear people say, and they brag, I'm a first generation Adventist. I'm a second, I'm a third, I'm a fourth generation Adventist. <laughs> are you a fourth generation Christian? Are you a fourth? And, and, and I, I'm a first generation Adventist personally, but I'm glad I'm a first generation Adventist. You know why I'm glad? Because I got a chance to see uh, other, other churches, and when I came in, I studied with a critical eye. Now, if I had been a fourth generation Adventist or a third generation Adventist, I would be in the church not really studying like I should. Not really listening to the sermon. Not really doing none of this stuff. And by the time I would grow up, I would become probably possibly critical. Because, let's face it, how many of our children right now come to our Revelation seminars? We usually have them out there, don't we? See what I mean? So they're not learning what the first generation Adventists learned. They're not learning from the seminars. They're not learning from all that. And so therefore, they're not really prepared when they get older to really appreciate the church. 
I beg to differ, sir. <laughs> I'm a fourth generation Adventist. <laughs> yes, I am. Now, I didn't say for everybody. I didn't say it applies for well, everybody. My mama had morning and evening sacrifice with us. We had morning and evening worship, and she just didn't get up. We had to read. Mm -hmm. We had to set it up. Our Sabbath school teachers did what they were supposed to do with us. Our AYS, it was MV at that time, they did what they were supposed to. When summer camp came, there was not one child left in the church for two weeks. Wow. They did what they, they, they did what they're supposed to do. Paid for it. But somewhere they along the line, somebody dropped the Let ball. Let me tell you this. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I was reading when I was five, and they expected me to. Wow. When, I, when we were walking church, little old children giving the welcome to the whole congregation. Wow. So it, 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 we, we lay that on our parents, on me, for my children not doing what they're supposed to do. We now can't say true. it's because they are. Uh, been a, they parents was it so long? Okay. It seems like when I hear that being said, that means that because you're a fourth generation Adventist, that you've been saved a long time. Does is that's not necessarily true? Now because there are people that come up in true. the Adventist home and they don't know Jesus Christ personally. They know now about the rules of Adventism. That's true. I, and, and I, I that, agree with you totally. Uh, yeah, and, and that sets them up. That's why the parents must really teach their kids, but the church members must really not allow the kids just to be roaming around in the hallways. The they've got to they come in, they've got they to learn, them. and they've got to teach them. Because if they don't, somebody like me will come on in that hadn't been in Adventist for years. I was paying calls for you. I, I, came, I remember I came in Adventist church at 16, and they were amazed when I was telling them all this stuff. And I was like, y'all should know it. All the young teenagers that were already there in the church, I was surprised that they didn't know what I knew. But see, I grew up in a Pentecostal church, and that gave me some good Bible knowledge. Certain things, of course, I had to connect some things together. And then I went through the Revelation seminars, uh, the seminars at that time, co and connected all together. And I was amazed as a teenager that I knew more than these teenagers that had grown up in the church. I was amazed. They didn't hardly know a thing. All they did was listen to the preacher and half listen to the preacher. They'd go to sleep. And the parents wouldn't wake them up. Because the parents were sleeping. <laughs> Can I get a witness for it? Because they were sleeping sometimes. So we, we, we got to pick the ball up because if, 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 if we got to let folks be thankful that they were born into the church. Amen. Because if you're not, sometimes when, you, when you're not, you go through all that conviction and Holy Ghost on you and you got to change everything. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That you, you know, I thought Sunday was it. Now I have to go through this conviction and stress. I was going through all that kind of stuff because I, I did not want to do it. I had my own plans. But when I surrendered to Christ, because it was about Christ, then I no longer felt that heavy yoke on me. So see, when we feel yokes, it's because there's some part of us that's not really surrendering to Christ. That's the bottom line. You can blame it on the law all you want. You can blame it on this, blame it on that. But it's something else that's not really being su surrendered to Christ. That's the bottom line. Let's stand. Let's stand. All right. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the study today. I pray, oh God, that somebody listed on the Internet will be blessed. And I thank you, Lord, for us who are here that we're blessed. And I pray, oh God, you'll bless our family and friends day this Sabbath that we will have uh, visitors to come and and hear your word and fellowship with the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Give somebody a hug. Don't forget this casual dress on this Sabbath, this casual dress. And let's, and let's pray to invite somebody to come. And then claim it by faith, all right? Claim it by faith. I invited my folks. I'm claiming it by faith that I'm going to see them. Amen. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to be our example. God bless you all.
欧哥